Somebody asks, are you are your drivers subcontractors or employees? John Keylock asked me that question. Uh, right now I have 10, two 1099 uh, drivers. For me, I give them the option um, between either making them 1099 or making them W-2. Like I tell them, if you 1099, I got a really good tax person that they can go to um, that will basically keep them in the green and they won't be owing a whole lot of money at the end of the year. Or if you W-2, like I tell them, you can W-2 and it comes with full benefits, Kaiser, uh, Delta Dental, the whole nine yards. But at the same time, California is going to tax you up the yin yang because that's just how we are as um, as a state. Uh, what is factoring? Uh, factoring is where you sell your bills to, and that comes from Cedric Omen. Factoring is when you sell your bills to a company, kind of like a credit union, and they basically uh, pay you, they buy your bills from you, and they pay you up front, and they take a small percentage, and then they eventually bill the broker or the customer for their money. And then sometimes, depending on the factoring company, if the broker or the company doesn't pay them, they come back and take it from you. <laughs> to make that that's just in a in a gist of what how factoring works. Uh somebody asked this question. Uh insurance. This is comes from ORG on ground reality. Insurance. Once you don't have a driver or a truck, will be parked for a certain time. For example, an owner operator takes a break, goes on vacation for a month. Uh, what goes on with insurance? Honestly, the insurance, you still got to pay it. Uh, like, for instance, I set Jezebel down my white truck for 30 days. Even though my truck set for 30 days, I still had to pay the, what, $900 a month for insurance? Uh, when it comes to owner operators, it all depends because like I said before, I'm still looking into hiring on a owner operator and how it's going to work for insurance, which hopefully by next week I'll have that answer and I'll drop a video explaining that. Um, but yeah, somebody asks, how long after you sent in everything for a new entrant audit did you get word back all clear going through that now? cousin st louis um with my new entrant audit i submitted everything on a saturday um saturday night and by sunday night i got my answer that i had passed so you know i hope that answered your question somebody asks what mileage did you what mileage and make did you buy both your trucks what repair expenses so far for each how do you buy your first truck? Thanks. That's from LF. Um, let me see. I bought Jezebel when she had 331,000 miles uh, from the auction. And now she has, hold on, I was just looking at it, 670,000 miles. Yeah, 677,818. So 67718 uh 670,718 miles is what Jezebel currently has. Um when it comes to her repairs, I've done a whole lot of repairs to her. I've probably spent about 20 grand in repairs fixing her. But she's a very good truck. She's been very loyal to me and she's been very strong. Um the Black Pearl, I got her with 200 no, uh, damn, I don't even remember. I got her with 189,000 miles on her, and now she has 303. Mind you, I'm, I'm running team in that truck, so she has a little bit more miles on her now. Uh, she's past the 100 grand mark. Um, only major repairs I've had with that one was just pms honestly yeah i've just done a bunch of pms on her pms and well, windshield yeah i think i replaced the windshield other than that no issues so far knock on wood so yeah um 
when it comes to buying your first truck, for me, I like Freightliners because they're just very good trucks. They're very uh, cheap when it comes to breakdowns and stuff, and they just, they're dependable. I can get parts any and everywhere. Um, somebody asks, I have a question. I'm in the process of working on getting my authority. Question is, it a good idea to hire drivers with their own truck and trailer? I will supply the insurance and permits. Also, what do you think about blood factoring and their benefits? This is from William Tharp. Uh, honestly, when it comes to hiring drivers, uh, if you're gonna run under your own authority, you have to think about this. Your first year is going to be the make or break you year. Uh, if I could do it all over again, I would only have one truck, one trailer for my first year because you're gonna, basically all eyes are on you. Uh, from my experience within my first year, I've had um, a whole lot happen. I have a possession of narcotic charge on my authority because of my driver. Uh, so that's stuff that you know you have to worry about and that you have to go through. Uh, insurance companies don't like that. So in my honest opinion, if you're going to get your own authority, just be mindful that if once you hire somebody, you're taking on a huge responsibility of hoping that that person or the truck and trailer are in a condition to where it won't put you in hot water. It won't put you in a point where you can't even afford the insurance or even get insurance because of something that they did. So that's something to really think about when you first start out. Uh, in all honesty, I would say wait at least one year before you add drivers because within that first year, you want everything about your authority to be A1 and solid. You don't want no issues with uh, other drivers messing it up for you right out the gate like they've done with me so uh that would be my you know that would be my advice to anybody that you know is jumping out there wanting to start their own authority i mean if you do have other people like for me i came out with two trucks just be mindful that you're gonna have to hire some a1 solid people and you're just gonna have to do a lot of micromanaging your first year to make sure you stay compliant at A1. Because at the end of the day, you're the carrier and everything that other drivers do does fall back on you. So that's something to be mindful of. Um, somebody asks, where do I go? How do I start my LLC? I would say go to LegalZoom. That's the uh, best place that I can tell you to go is go to legal zoom i think i don't know how much they'll charge you but that's probably the fastest and easiest place to go that's from the williams family um somebody asked could you do a video on your cars this is from mike berry honestly i've had a lot of people ask me that if i can make a video you know i guess showing off either my house or my cars or all this other stuff but me personally i i like to keep that side you know that's like personal to me so everything that you know i do outside of trucking and all that i like to keep to myself and it's actually a reason why i do that because a lot of my drivers follow me too so you know i don't want to come off as you know um just being too flashy to this to that and you know uh I don't know it's like I like nice things and I have a lot of nice things but I that to me is just like I mean if I show it you'll see it if not then it's kind of like I mean I hey that's just me if you see me if I show it or something like that then hey it is what it is if not then hey but I'm not really gonna make a video just blatantly showing off my stuff because, you know, I come from a lifestyle where um, when I was younger, people that used to show stuff off, yeah, it, uh, it was, it welcomed uninvited guests and uninvited attention. So, you know, 
growing up where I grew up at and how I grew up is just something I've never really been that type. You know, people around me have been that type, but I've just never been that type of dude. I've always been, you know, the low key, you'll see me when you see me, you'll see me in it if you see me in it type of dude. Every now and then you might get a glimpse, but I like being, you know, low key. Uh, let me see. Can you do a video showing the process it took to set up your trucks with e-logs? Yes, I can. I'll have to drop a video for that because I recently had Next Track, but I trashed them because they were horrible. So now I have, uh, what do I have now? Um, I got Keep Trucking. So I'm going to drop a video on e-logs and explaining that. Um, let me see. Somebody asks, do you give your drivers a drug test when you hire them? Yes, I do. Um, I actually give them the pre-employment drug test, and then I also give them, well, now I give them a hair and urine sample um, because, you know, the driver that got busted for having weed on him, he passed two drug tests. And like I, like I was telling them, I mean, this man passed two piss tests. He passed the pre-employment and he passed the random. So, I mean, it is what it is. You know, I follow every simple direction that I was supposed to. And, I mean, like I said before, there's ways now I know of getting around and behind things and over stuff. So, yes, that's something I do, but it still will not stop you from what I've learned. All right, let's see. All right. But this video is about 24 minutes long, so I'm going to chop it off right here. But yeah, love, peace, prosperity, and I will catch y'all in the next Q&A. If you guys have any more questions, drop them below. And like I said before, um, love, peace, prosperity, and I will see y'all in the next Q&A video. Deuces.